Hello everybody, I'm Katarina Water, Zero Waste Mom of Two, full-time teacher, and this is my wonderful summer. I wanted to welcome you into our garden today and go over some zucchini plants. So we're gonna talk about some pests, the basics, um, and some of my tips and tricks. And yeah, we love zucchini, our family absolutely loves it. And so we'll do that. Before we get started, um, I do have some wonderful kids that are enjoying summer in the background. So I hope that you can hear us okay, hear me okay. It's not too distracting, but um, yeah, enjoy the sum the noise of summer, if you will. Uh, we have a large backyard. It's just yeah, they're just right there, and that's okay. Um, so here we go. Let's start with just the basics. Zucchini is a summer crop, which means um, they can be sowed in late spring. They have these large seeds, which makes it really fun for kids, especially young kids. They can easily use them. They can easily plant them. Um, and then they do pop up and pretty soon germinate pretty quickly. So it's there really fun, I think. And you can quickly see if you if your seeds are good or not, basically, too. And um, sometimes you can do it like sow them indoors in like a Ziploc and kind of be it's really fun to experiment with as well and then transplant them into it um, so I've got three zucchini plants back here we're gonna kind of go over the anatomy of them these need a full sun they love the heat and they love consistent watering which we'll get into more in a little bit but just really quickly this is the anatomy of a plant the zucchini plant okay so I've got this is the zucchini right here this is a little bit older one and they have a flower at the end this is like the female flower if you will there's one over here as well female flower and then you have all these other female flower then you have all these other like long slender flowers right here these are the male flowers okay and what you need is you need pollination where the male flower and female flower they're kind of cross pollinating if you will um which sometimes people hand pollinate them using like a q-tip but you don't you really don't have to do that if you have set yourself up successfully um if you wanted to try it you're welcome to it but i i've never had to do it um because of some of the things i've done um yeah the zucchinis like these ones aren't quite ripe yet you'll see that they're ripe when they're a lot larger um and this flower at the end does fall off and then the skin's kind of more soft um and depending on the variety, they can come striped, they can come dark green, things like that. So um, I forgot to say, I'm in zone 8B. We're in South Seattle area, almost by Tacoma, Washington, and it is 90 degrees outside. It's very hot, unlike, it's not typical for our Seattle area. It's the end of July. So these plants are very happy right now because they're, they're hot. Um, the thing that is harder for them though, is that inconsistency that's 90 degrees now, but next week it's gonna be in the 70s. So it's not, that can stress the plane out, just depending on how quickly things drop. So let's go into like some diseases and pests and things like that. Um, and some issues you might have. So I was talking about pollination. So some of the issues you can have is if your flowers are falling off very easily, like this. And these squash flowers, although you can eat them, um, they often they fall off because they're not being pollinated well. They might fall off before they're being pollinated. They could fall off because they already are pollinated, the, the male flowers, but if most likely it's they're not getting pollinated um, if you're not seeing zucchini and they're falling off. So something you can do again, you can do the pollination with a Q-tip or you can plant more flowers and encourage the pollinators to come to your garden. Um, let's see here. They they do open up. I've noticed they open up in the morning a lot more. And so I tend to also try not to be in the, um, in the garden as much and that when all the flowers have bloomed to just let the pollinators kind of do them their thing. The other thing you'll notice is, um, this one broke, but you might notice the end of your zucchinis kind of dying off. So you'll see this is like a regular zucchini and this up here is this yellow part of it. This one broke in half, but same thing you'll notice that the zucchini the base of it was kind of green and then you can kind of imagine it being put together again um, the top of this had yellowed and kind of died off same thing it could be due to lack of pollination and so it's starting to grow but it wasn't actually pollinated or pro pollinated properly and so then it stopped that growth and then the plant aborted it 
So um, the other reason to plant my uh, the zucchini might be aborted or turn yellow at the end like that is because there's stress on the plant. So that could be from inconsistent watering. It could be from um, the, the huge change in temperatures. It could be from the nutrition of the plant not being well. For me, I tell nutrition based off of the leaves as well. And so I can see that my leaves are doing pretty well. They look really healthy. So I do not think it's for me a, like a calcium deficiency or nitrogen. Those are some common things, but I don't think that's a problem for me. I just think it's maybe pollination. And you can see that there are zucchinis on here. So I'm not too worried about it because I do have plenty of zucchinis that are getting pollinated. Um, with that as well, sometimes your zucchinis can be kind of irregularly shaped. Um, that might be from, that's probably from inconsistent watering. So staying on a schedule and watering consistently is a good idea. Um, I typically water in the morning, like early morning, so that over time it, it kind of um, heats up and I don't have a slug or snail problem. You can do evening as well, but those are going to create a snail or slug problem. Zucchini doesn't necessarily, you don't need to worry about that with zucchini. The one thing you do want to make sure to avoid those problems is that you make sure that the leaves are kind of off the ground. So as you can see underneath here, there's no real leaves. Um, everything's off the ground. So here as well, everything really is off the ground. And so that's really good. Um, I have not had an issue with this, but squash vine bore is a very real thing for several people. And one way you can tell if you have this that issue is by looking here at the base of the plant. Okay, so I have not had this issue. I do not have experience with it, but you're looking for like a hole where you might see that squash vine bore kind of bury itself in here. I don't have any to show you. I haven't experienced it myself, but um, I say that. <laughs> and I'm going to jinx myself probably. Um, so yeah, that's that. In terms of um, care for the plants, you also want to keep an eye out for powdery mildew. Powdery mildew is going to look like this. It's kind of got these white blotches um, on the leaves. Let's see if I can find a good example. So right here, um, you have to kind of be careful because sometimes it could just be the leaves have that variegated look to it. Um, but if it looks white and it kind of seems to almost like rub off with your fingers, then it's probably powdery mildew. And you can just, for me, I just remove the leaves that I see it on because it can quickly spread. Um, especially when you have a bunch of squash plants together, like I do. So I've got three right here. One, two, three. And they're pretty tight. Um, spacing wise, these are spaced a little close together. So another way to avoid powdery mildew is to space your plants out more than I have right now. Um, and that would also help just to get the air circulation. Um, with air circulation, cutting some of the some of the leaves, these leaves, out so that there it creates more circulation is important. Too dense of a space, it won't allow it to dry out fast enough, um, which will create that mildew. Which is why I water in the morning so it dries up and isn't just sitting wet and moist. Where in the evening it will sit wet and moist. Um, yeah, I did just finish watering because I did forget to water last night and this morning and they need that consistency. So it was important. It was more important for me to water during the heat of the day and potentially lose it due to evaporation than it was to wait. That was more important. But if you want to help with consistency, you can lay down a mulch. As you can see, I don't have a mulch. So that would help with keeping moisture in. Um, the last couple of things are going to be um, just tips and tricks and then how we use the zucchini. So tips and tricks are I absolutely love this year I put them in tomato cages and as you can see I have been able to show you so many things because of the tomato cages. You can see that they're off the ground right here. You can see that they're um, they don't let's see here like the, the, the leaves are lifted up. You can easily see what the zucchinis are. There's really good circulation going on um, because of these cages. I'm gonna show you an example where they're not in cages and you can kind of see the difference. Um, so that's one of my tips and tricks for you. We're gonna go over and see that difference. So I really encourage the tomato cages. Uh, that's 
So here we have those ones got, get some shade. These ones are in full, full heat all the time. They get a little bit of break, but here we go. So you can see the difference. Here's one that's in a tomato cage right here. And you can see that there's everything is off the ground. You can tell if maybe squash vine bore were there. You can tell like what's going on. All of these leaves are really open and aerated and I can quickly see like what's going on with my zucchinis. Over here, on the other hand, it is on the ground. Like I, it's, it's on the ground. So you're more prone to disease and rot and um, pests and things like that. You can see that there is a zucchini over here, but I've got to kind of like move the plant around. I've got to kind of adjust and things like that. I, it's harder for me to tell. I can prop it up with a rock or something, but yeah. And then over here, I've got more zucchinis that are really closely spaced, but same thing. Like there's not as much air circulation going on, so it's a lot harder. Okay. Um, the ones over that I just showed you, those ones are were from starts. These ones here, I, I'm trying to remember. I think I did, I'm trying to remember if I have, I do have direct sowed in here. I don't remember if I have any starts, but I definitely have some that are direct sowed. I guess, actually, you know what? I do have starts proof right here. So these are black beauties. Sorry, it took so long to get that information, but, and all of them. So I do have a set of seeds and I believe this one's a seed and this one is a start. Okay. So there you go. Um, and I like to do succession planting, which means I'm going to plant one set and then wait times plant again. So I don't have it all at one time. Um, last thing is what do I do when they're done harvested and things like that? How do I harvest? So you can see here, here is a ZP. It's ready to go. And I'm just going to grab it here and twist. I don't know how well you can see that, but twist. And pull and it's gonna come right off plant like that so this is ready to be harvested and used you can eat it with the skin on you can eat it with peel it through the skin so many different things this is why we love our zucchinis is we've got we can do zucchini bread we can make a little like pasta I don't know what they're called zucchini noodles there you go with the zucchini we can dice it we can fry it we can put it grill it oh, i love grilled zucchini um, on the barbecue we can bread it and kind of make almost like fries if you will and do like veggie fries so much so much so much it works for so many dishes and things like that so this is our number one thing that we probably use in our garden so we have a lot of them um, for our family of four we have one, two, three four five Six, seven, eight. I think we have nine zucchini plants and um, we'll see how well they do this year but yeah it's pretty good the uh, other thing we do is if we have too much then we're gonna dice them and freeze them for a later use so or we can shred them and freeze them for later use as well we really love zucchini and hopefully you found something in the video that was helpful, um, a tip or trick or maybe something about the pest and like or subscribe because I love to go over zero waste options as well as my garden. So have a good rest of your summer and thank you for listening and thank you for listening to our beautiful um, summer noise in the background of kids play. So take care. Bye.